All right. Welcome to the World Dodgeball Federation 2018 Championships here in Los Angeles. My name is Terry Thrasher. And I'm Bill Fisher. And we are going to be bringing you all of the action in a verbal style. Uh, Bill, what are you most excited about today? I'm excited for all of these teams here, men and women. These are the best teams from the world here to play, uh, in my opinion, the greatest sport in the world. So I can't wait for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty excited too. I, uh, the courts look awesome. Nope. <laughs> the courts look awesome. Everything looks super professional. <laughs> and we are going to kick things off very shortly with Argentina and Hong Kong in the men's game on court one. Uh, just to note, there are links uh, on USA Dodgeball. If you are looking for any of the other matches on some of the other streams, we got the schedule up on USA Dodgeball's Facebook group, as well as the uh, court schedule for the stream. So you'll be able to see any match you want. All of them should be available uh, on YouTube. So. And the first match we have here is the Hong Kong versus Argentina match. This is the men's division we'll be watching here first. Yep. Um, yeah. You, you were here last year. How did these teams do last year? Yeah, Hong Kong, uh, fairly experienced team. There is a lot of uh, veteran, like Hong Kong actually helped found the WDBF. So they've been around since the beginning. They hosted, I believe, the first WDBF championships in 2012. And uh, yeah, some returning members on the team, uh, Jackie Loon, Rob Hinson, Jeff Floro, and others. I think they'll probably do fairly well for themselves. And then we've got Argentina, brand new to, uh, to the world stage. And yeah, I look forward to seeing what they can bring. Yeah, interesting fact about Argentina is that they have the um, smallest team of any, of any team. So their squad is going to get a lot of playing time and a lot of time to like learn how to play as a team. Um, where a yep. lot of these teams have like up to uh, like 12 players, uh, there's going to be a lot of swaps. Um, the player next to you may not always be the same, and so there's a little bit of difference in the style you can play each match. But Argentina, they only have one sub, so they're going to get a lot of playing time with each other. They're going to know how to play with each other. Um, not a lot of swapping going on. Um, also, there have been a ton of Argentina fans in the comments, yep. so shout out to them. They are representing right now. So yeah, Argentina is excited. Argentina's we hope you're cheering for your excited. team, absolutely. We, yeah, I hope their conditioning is up to it because uh, six on six dodgeball and bringing seven, seven people is, I feel like that would be exhausting, but I look forward to seeing how they hold up. Uh, yeah, they've probably been playing for long enough that they're used to, used to the grind of a tournament, so. Yeah, oh, absolutely. This is gonna be an awesome way to kick us off. I've, one of the, the founding teams and a brand new team. This yeah. is gonna be, uh, it's gonna be interesting. I'm enjoying the mix of, uh, old and new in this case. And we've got, we've got some warm-ups going on. So for those that have uh, never seen this format before, let's, how, would you, uh, how would you describe this format? So it's six on six. Yeah, six players on six players. Uh, play proceeds until one team has lost all of their players, and then the team that still has some players remaining scores a point. And the matches will be two 20-minute halves. So at the end of 40 minutes of play, whoever has the most points will win the match. And during the round robin, that's what it's all about, is getting those, those wins, avoiding those losses. Uh, so familiar dodgeball rules for a lot of people. Once a ball is thrown across the center line, that ball is live. Anybody that it hits uh, is eliminated as long as they get hit before somebody else, say, catches the ball. Uh, so if a player gets hit, and then the ball hits the ground or the net's behind the players, then that player is out. If a catch is made, then the throwing player is eliminated. And if the catching team has a player who has already previously been eliminated, they bring them back first out, first back on. For the most part, I think that part of dodgeball rules is pretty common between just about every style out there. So once, once some of the more specific rules come up, I think we'll yeah. kind of speak to those as they get up. I suppose there's the opening rush. That's a little different from some leagues. Yeah, um, so for the opening rush, uh, the ball, uh, you, there's three balls on your side. Your right side is your right side, correct? So the teams yep. are rushing for the balls on their right side. Um, the players will go up. They get it. Uh, they can't throw it once they pick it up. They have to get it behind their, uh, their white line first. That's their check line. Once that ball has cleared the plane, their feet don't have to be behind it. Just the ball itself has to be behind that plane. Once that happens, uh, players can throw immediately. You'll see a lot of uh, like 360 spin throws because it's the fastest way to get that ball checked. And teams are a little bit off, uh, off kilter at that point because they've just grabbed balls. 
they're coming back now, and those players are like, you know, changing that momentum so rapidly yeah. that that's the best time to, to get some of these guys. Exactly. You'll see the, the fastest players who get to the balls, they're often the most vulnerable on these opening rushes. And besides even the spin throws, sometimes you'll see a player who grabs a ball, pitch it back to a teammate who's right at that clear line so that that teammate can bring the ball back on their windup, bring it over the line that they have to bring it over in order to make it a legal throw, and then attack a player just immediately. Those, those plays can happen very quickly, and they can set your team up with an early player advantage. So, Especially if there's that one player that's just dodging like crazy that match before, you want to prioritize them before they have ball in hand to block or be ready. And yep, take your early opportunities if you can, if you can get them. So. Yeah, and otherwise, I think for a lot of people, if you're used to seeing dodgeball played on the schoolyard or in a recreational league, the, the world championship style of play is a lot more calculated, a little slower, a little more deliberate. Uh, there's a lot of pump faking. I think that's something that a lot of people who are new to the sport aren't used to seeing, just how often yeah. people wind up and don't actually let go of the ball. So, It's awesome, too. You'll see a lot more, uh, it's not just pump fakes, but a lot of more coordinated pump fakes. You'll see people all at the same time, you know, you'll see those arms fly. That way it's hard to tell which person's going to throw. So there's a lot of thought that goes into every little detail of these matches. And a lot of these teams, their practice has probably been focused on what kinds of plays to set up, like on offense, how to mix up the, the shots, like who's going to take those shots, who's going to stay, keep, keep a hold of their ball and protect their teammates. But also in defense, if you have two or three balls and you're the team that's on defense, you don't want every member of your team to be letting go of a throw uh, from the defensive position and then leaving yourselves without them. Because in WDBF style, the, the throw clock resets as, as long as any team throws. So if you're the defending team, you decide to take a shot when you think somebody's not looking or that you can protect a teammate, there is some risk involved. Sometimes yeah. it's worthwhile, but that's it's, it's got to be a calculated risk. That's definitely a big risk compared to some of these other things like, uh, like Elite, for instance, where once you have burden, it's up to you to throw. That other team throws, the clock doesn't reset. But yeah. here, you take that risky throw, you, too, you throw too early. The team has an extra ball now, and they get to reset their play, call a different thing now with this new ball majority. Um, and, you know, that could do a lot of damage, especially if you're down like two to four balls and you throw one away down it, to one blocker. It can. And then, then you'll often see the one player remaining who has a ball. They'll, that ball will often be moved to the middle, and a player will step up in front of their teammates and just try to protect their teammates, maybe draw in a weaker throw from their opponents, but it's a, it's a dicey position to be in, for oh sure. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a position that once you get in, you're just trying to mitigate risk at that point. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, like, y you don't want to just take those out, so you're going to say, I'm going to take someone with me, force them to, to play at you, hopefully they throw two or three at you in that, that weird situation that they're not necessarily expecting, and... Uh, yep. Yeah. Try to claw back an advantage for your for your team at that point. So Yeah, just saying we know <laughs> we know they're gonna do something big here. We might as well make it on our terms. And it looks like we are nearly ready to start. We have the players ready on the back line. The balls are set up at center. And I think we are gonna be cutting to So the, the court players just shortly. have to start with their uh, their back foot on the line. That's uh, right. So they get to start on the court, unlike things uh, like Elite where they do have to start completely off the court. So where they're standing, uh, once we go over to them, uh, that's, they can be on that court. Uh, the men's and women's courts uh, are a slightly different dimension. I think it's a five foot difference. That's correct. Uh, each half in the men's game is 30 feet from center and the halves in the women's game are 25 feet from center. So the women's court is a little shorter, a little more tight, affects the strategy a little bit. Um, and yeah, yeah. Once, once those players come off the back line, once that point starts, if they touch the back line or the side line, they are out. That is a very firm rule. And last year in the WDBF championships in Toronto, we saw quite a few players just get called out for line violations. It's hard when you're dodging to actually avoid the line sometimes. So. Oh my god, yes. So uh, just for reference, a player can't even touch one of the lines here. So you touch the line, you are out. Yep, that so is correct. There's no, uh, you know, you barely touch it, you're still out. So you'll see on the courts, it's the white lines that are the perimeter and the center line. Those are the dangerous ones once play starts. You can reach over the lines, but if you make any contact with them, that will eliminate you. There are a few other lines on the court. Uh, so for the men's game, you will notice that their, their white line is at the absolute back of the court. The women's white line is five feet in front. So for the men's game, they don't need to worry about touching that white line. It serves more as a warning that they're approaching the back line if they're backing yeah. up. 
uh, whereas the women's court has the benefit of the blue line in front. That serves the same warning for them to let them know when they're approaching the back of their court. And then there's a blue line that's about uh, 10 feet back from the, from the center line. That is the attacking line. That's the one that the balls have to go behind before they can be thrown at the opposing team off the start. And it looks like the clock is almost ready. Here we go. And right away, one of the Argentinian players is knocked out. <laughs> and Jackie Loon is perched at the center line. Okay. Looks like Hong Kong on the right in the red. Has ball control. They're approaching the line. And throw two. Get one back on that. Well, there's a good... Sorry, just a little bit of technical difficulties here. We see Hong Kong starting strong. They've reduced it down to three members of the Argentinian team. And now they and get... Big out, getting that corner player. Yeah. Committing two balls on him. And now we see, again, Hong Kong controlling that center line, reducing it down to just Ezekiel Tamazi. And we've got a whistle. You'll notice that uh, each of these teams have uh, players off the court holding the ball. Those are your shaggers. Uh, at any point, they can throw the ball back onto the court to a player uh, to help them get ball control again. That way you don't have to be uh, managing your own balls. Each team is allowed to do that. Uh, so the referees, I'm not sure what they're conferring on. They're directing the players back to the back line to reset play. And we do see once in a while those balls coming in from the other courts. Looks like we're resetting now. Oh uh, yeah, we're coming back in, and now just the single player from Argentina against. Ooh, Ooh balls collide in air, and a big shot by the corner while he's paying attention to the other side. Yeah, so that was Clarence Hoy with the elimination shot. And here I think we see Hong Kong just understands this style really well. They've been at it for a while. And Argentina, still a little new to this stage, possibly to the style as well. So first point's going to go to Hong Kong there. Score is 1-0 Hong Kong. This is court one for those that are, uh, that are interested. And Hong Kong misses that first shot. Oh, that one goes into the dirt. It's actually hard to get that shot off accurately when you're trying to do it so quickly, but. And there we see a couple of high shots from Argentina. Number six on Hong Kong, really dragged out that, uh, that, that opposing corner, really made him throw at him there. Yeah, that's Jackie Loon, who last year, he was a strong player for the Hong Kong side in Toronto. Uh. And now Argentina coming up to the line. And the counters. But yeah, but a lot of chaos, but no <laughs> Big hits. spin and the catch. <laughs> yeah, that's Ruiz. Number nine on Hong Kong did a spinning throw. But the Argentina just said, nope, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch that one. That's right. That's Hinson getting caught out. And now we see there's a block out of Matthew Kong. Oh, and the drop Ooh. catch. And yeah, once again, we see Hong Kong actually just grinding down their opponents. Argentina still four up and we see Jackie Loon trying to draw those balls in and he finally does get hit but I think that was a four ball spend by the Argentinian team we've got seven about 17 minutes left in this in this match counter throw by Ruiz Hong Kong staying safe up at that line keeping that pressure on this is not the grand final uh, just this is the grand beginning <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and here so one of the things you can see from the, the Hong Kong players understand very well is how to get those blocking balls out in front of them. You can see that their arms are extended pretty far in front of them when they're trying to block. Yeah, uh -huh. getting that ball out and getting small. Your job is to make that ball as big as possible compared to you. Yeah. These seven-inch balls are small. And even if they nick your fingers while you're blocking, you're out. So you're really trying to get small and compact behind that ball, and it's a hard thing to do. Yeah, oh, and a big shot on the guy not looking. That was yeah. like a 40-foot shot. Yeah, that was an aggressive throw, and it connected. That is a good reason to keep your eyes forward. 
Argentina, the new team, but they know the old tricks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, burden on Argentina. Getting the pressure on the line. We and see a double throw in that corner, and they take him out. Elbow. Argentina's left without any balls, though. Yeah, their style's definitely a little aggressive, but they're making those hits now. And you see Hong Kong just setting up without fear going for and eliminating Tamazi. And now we've got just Ruiz and uh, that is the other Tamazi. Throwing up alone, missing, throwing both balls. But they both went into the ground. Another toss, that one heading over the head of Clarence Hui. Going for the double team, but Ruiz dodges both. Oh, but that one he can't get out of the way of. Tried to go low, did not get low enough there. <laughs> Hit him right in the inner thigh. Now the counter attack. Three missing. Dodges both of those. Okay, he's staying really aggressive. Yeah, well, I mean, you can't, you can't be too conservative if you're by yourself. There's some good blocking. And now coming up on the throw, missing. Trying this, the second throw, missing. This is Tamazi and stays clear. Almost touches that line, but he's safe. Yeah, he's getting really close, but Lawrence Wong and Clarence Wee are going to try working out. You see that they're spreading out. They're forcing him to look at two different sides. Ooh, Ooh, and I think he got... It. Yeah, he did get Clarence Wee there. So now we're down to a one-on-one. -on -one. Tamaz is doing a great job here. What was it? This started us as like a four-on-one, I think, right? I believe so. His aggression. Oh, that one's wild, and... He's getting out of the way. He's staying yeah. safe. So far, so good. He goes under that ball. Now, Lawrence Wong, two balls in hand. He's going to be on the offensive. There's a fake from Tomasi and a block. <laughs> One-handed block. Confident. Oh, but then he leaves himself with no ball. Wong missing. That's Lawrence Wong, last in for Hong Kong. Right, you can see him going low, holding both balls out to block. He draws in both throws. Ah, but he can't connect on the counter. And this one is going to be exhausting for both players, I think, because we have got a whole bunch of back and forth. And connects. Hong Kong takes point two. That was a major comeback by the Argentinian team, but Wong closes it out. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, they lost that point, but still that was some good momentum, and I think that's an encouraging sign for the team. You know, they can play their game, they can keep some of these points close. Okay, let's see what Argentina can do here. Everyone's just getting started out for the day, too, so as the day goes on, ooh, big shot off the rush. Yeah. You can see Hong Kong very quick there to getting that shot off the rush and knocking out Ruiz. Big throw. Double team committed. Argentina has three balls, okay. One rolled over to their side. Number six putting a lot of pressure. Yeah, exactly. That is Jackie Loon. He's drawing in quite a few balls while he's on the court, so. Yeah, he's, the, he's one of the captains for um, the Hong Kong team. And he's showing why. He's up there, he's putting pressure. And he's not scared to be up there. Yeah, he's very quick on his feet, quick with his blocks. Last year, he was the last, last man on for the Hong Kong side numerous times. And we also see him holding the line no out. There's a coordinated attack. Three, Three falls seven. on that. Yeah, we saw a nice uh, dodge low from Siufi. And now four balls strong from Argentina. Neither so connects, though. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of their throws have been going a little high, so hopefully they can find their aim. Big block, block by number six. Very casual about that. Yeah. And he gets him on the toe, number nine. That's Rob Hinson. Great shot. So your corners are pretty important players, wouldn't you say? I'd say so. They have the job of protecting. Ooh, look Big at the rush. agility. Forces the oh, dodge. He boomed him. He's so good. And Hong oh. Kong takes point three. Yeah, so there I think we saw Hong Kong playing really well as a team. I think 
Uh, Argentina just showing a little bit of inexperience with the team game. They, uh, so far, they're having trouble getting up to the line and setting up for those offensive throws unless they have total control of the ball. So I think, I think it'll be good if they can figure out how to uh, maybe be a little more patient or maybe uh, find their opportunities to get up to that line and, and drive Hong Kong back. Oh, and there we see Ooh, a pop up. They, oh. And the catch. That's a tip back in, but. That was awesome. That hit three players. The third one caught it. Okay. I think one yeah. player stepped out of bounds though, a little bit too early, so I don't think he. Or does he come back in on that? Okay. Uh, I don't think. Yep. Okay. I think that's what the refs are talking about. It looked like one of the players that tipped it up went out of bounds to do so, and he came back in on it. I don't know if you can come back in on the same play that you got out on. Yeah, so it's, uh, I'm not sure the official rules on this. The thing is that if the player was out first by touching the space outside of the court, that player, once they're fully out of play, they can come back in on a catch. They're just an eliminated player. So if, if the timing works, I believe that is allowed. Oh, okay. All right, looks like they have all six on the court. So that was a catch. Hit one player, a second one popped it up from going out of bounds, and the third player was aware enough to go and get that catch. That is something that the, the Hong Kong team seems to be very good at, is setting up pop-ups that their teammates can catch. So it's a tough break for Argentina, but a heads-up play from Hong Kong as they come up to the line. Four is strong and missing, but yeah, that did drive uh, Duarte out of bounds. I think his hand Ooh. touched out. Yeah, there we see a good shot onto Ezekiel Tomati. Loom with a big shot there. He, I guess his, uh, his teammate there thought the, he was going to go for the corner right in front of him, but he took that secondary shot. The guy just to his left, the guy that wasn't paying as much attention and got him right in the ankle. There we saw Ruiz with a well-timed uh, shot. He threw and hit Hinson right as the Hong Kong side was on the attack. So good heads-up attack from Ruiz. And now, uh, four balls strong. Oh, and two balls thrown. Three balls thrown by Argentina. They're making a lot of throws from uh, the middle of the court. They're very confident in their throw distance. But there we see. Big out. I think they committed two on that. Oh, big catch. Yep. Argentina. So there was a hit on the other side, but Argentina now back up to two. They have three balls in hand. Still in for uh, Hong Kong as their captain. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Failed attempt to catch. Well, that one goes a little high and wide, and now Jackie Loon trying to keep him pinned to the ground, but he misses. Now we see John Liu, Jackie Loon, and Clarence Hui again. Corner's putting a lot of pressure, and right. Ooh. Okay. I think that was a, a trade. Both players got out there. It looked so yeah. another point to Hong Kong. And there's three on one situations and you're the last person in. You know, you can't be trading. You're you're trading away the game in that case. Yeah, you do have to take some chances, but yeah, that was that was one where it was perhaps a little too aggressive because as the Hong Kong team you can afford to trade, obviously. You you trade one player for one, you win the set, so Yeah. So they get to be aggressive. You'll see they, they push the corners out. They made them look multiple ways. And once they started looking the other way, they got them. So now okay. we see some back and forth hitting out. I believe that was Jackie Lewin. Yep. Got out the captain. Got him out early. He was dominant that last game. So taking him out is going to be a breath of fresh air for Argentina. Yeah, Jackie co-captaining, I believe, with uh, number 77, Jeff Floro. That is correct. Okay. So both teams have three balls right now, but as they have the same number of players, uh, it is now Argentina's turn to throw. A lot Let's of balls see. committed there by Argentina. Yeah, back and forth. But I think we see the refs conferring again. <laughs> you can see they're checking in on something with the players. Maybe it's just the ball counts. For those asking in the stream, I believe this is the only court up in streaming right now. Um, I think they're working on the rest. So, yeah. Uh, we are watching the chat, so if people do have questions, please send them in, and if I catch them, I will ask them for you. 
Hong Kong pushing right. that line. Big catch by Argentina. Okay, this yeah. could be their turnaround. Yeah, Tavella there making the grab, making sure as he just collapsed his whole body onto it. There we see some good blocking. Oh, and there's a uh, ball pops oh. up there off to Art, but uh, nobody on his team could find it. So Argentina's looking good this game. They're committing a lot of balls, but they're connecting, and they're 4 4 right now. Yeah, and they oh, oh, and I think they won. Yeah, they got Hui there, and Hui has often been. One of the last players left, so it's another good connection from the Argentina inside. Argentina is playing bold. They are very bold. Okay. Yeah, I like, I like the confidence from them. You know, show up as the rookie country on, on the world stage, and you want to show some confidence, so. Yeah. See another big throw there, but. <laughs> what a nice shot. Oh, my. Argentina's looking good this game. They are nailing these very tough shots. Yeah, we said early, some of their throws were going pretty high and wild, but now that they, maybe they're finding their accuracy because a lot of those, especially out of Ruiz, number 10, and what should be the left corner on your screen, he's been connecting. So I, I think another part of like Ooh, those aggressive. initial, Ooh. <laughs> gets him to look right at him and yeah. his corner helps him out. Both of them nail that shot. Yep. I think it, another thing that's really uh, important to call out is that these balls, when you first throw them, uh, you know, they're always a little different. So you get a little different spin on them. They go a little bit, you know, here and there. But once you start getting a match or two in, you start learning this ball. And you've seen it with Argentina. They're hitting their shots now. So yep. I might chalk it up to that as well. Now it's just Ruiz. So we've seen Hong Kong play these two-on-ones pretty well, but it looks like Ruiz managed to even the odds for himself. And now an aggressive Ooh. shot toward Kong. Tries to catch well, him while he's not looking yeah. there. Kong blocking, faking, and hitting. Hong Kong takes their sixth point there. I believe there's about five minutes left in this half. Once again, uh, halves uh, are 20 minutes, 40-minute match total. Uh, you win the match by having more points. Uh, so the points in the game are a tiebreaker, but you want to win the match. That's what you're, you're looking to do here. Exactly. And so Hong Kong setting themselves up early with a pretty big lead. They've been executing well, but there have been some, some close calls. And a couple of bounces or a couple of shots that had connected better, and Argentina would be on the board as well. So there is a shot missing off the rush from Chris Lung. I think Argentina is starting to find their groove. Let's see, how, let's see how they do this game. And on the counter, great shot onto the foot of Duarte. And another back and forth, knocking out. Uh, that was Ruiz there, who was the, probably the most dangerous Argentinian thrower so far. <laughs> Go came up and defended his player there. Yeah. Number 60 on uh, Hong Kong is Go Addo. Yeah, but now Chow gets hit out. And on a counter, that's blocked well by Go Addo. I'm impressed by Argentina's like willingness to throw from that back line. They're kind of playing a little bit like Malaysia, where they're not afraid to throw from anywhere on the court. That does help. Oh. It does help to keep your opponents off balance. Uh, there are some times that they maybe could afford to come up a little closer, although not now. This is, <laughs> this is a dangerous situation. Oh. Ooh, gets the captain. Yeah, we see. Oh, uh, there's the hit. But we saw number six there, Jackie Lewin, had said, or he had tried to block, but probably that ball coming in had gotten onto his fingers or rolled off the ball onto his body. Uh, you can use the balls to block, obviously, but if on the way by or on the way down, if that ball does get a part of your body before it touches the floor, that's still a hit. Yeah, so. and just to call out, one ball can get multiple people out. Yep. So if it hits me and then hits you, we're both out. So those are uh, throws that I love to get. <laughs> Well, there's a hit on to Jackie Loon again. And a ball bouncing right over toward <laughs> us. Ooh. Uh, there are extra balls on the court just in case some of these go flying. Sometimes, obviously, a wild throw or, or a ricochet. A lot of pressure now by Hong Kong. A lot of pump fakes trying to get that next ball. Yeah, you can see how they want to keep control of the line. They want to make sure Argentina doesn't come up and be really aggressive. 
there we saw a couple we, of a couple of good throws. We haven't had to uh, really talk about it because this game's been very aggressive from both sides. But there's a 10-second throw count. We have not had to see anyone get close to that whatsoever because these teams are both so aggressive and willing to take shots whenever they see them. That's right. But you can see the referees are they're counting. They're pointing toward whichever team has to make the throws. Ooh, good shot there that Matthew Kong could not block cleanly. I believe that was Duarte letting go of that one. So Hong Kong is a team of 12. You can only have six on the court. So you're going to see a lot of these players rotating in and out. Yeah, and it, it's interesting because obviously you want to make sure players can find a groove within the match, but you also want to make sure everybody's got enough in the tank by the end of a three-day tournament. Ooh, Big nice grab. Number nine, that's Diego Shufi. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to ask him how to say his name because I do not want to... Uh, I don't want to mangle it, but yep. Yeah. That was a great grab. He set up, planted his feet, he looked for it, and he, he just wrapped it up. So now we see Argentina five players strong on four from Hong Kong. Big uh, shot. Taken out two, and they were on the, uh, on the defense of their Hong Kong. And you saw them as soon as those throws came in from Argentina, Hong Kong countering, stepping forward aggressively, looking for good shots. Hong that's Kong staying small. I think the that may have bounced before it actually connected with Duarte. Yeah, that's that's what it looked like to me as well. Yep. He was checking with the ref to make sure, but and then he takes a throw aggressively, dodges the counter attack from Chow. Number five on uh, on Hong Kong, Chow. He's doing his job there. The second your opposing corner throws, you typically want to throw. You do not want to let your inside players get hit just for free. Exactly. Those players in the corner, they have a big job for protecting their teammates and making the players across from them worry about the throw coming in. So whether you're on offense or defense, it's really, oh, there's a pop-up catch off the block from Go Ato. It's usually pretty dangerous uh, when you get down to one ball for the exact reason that your corners don't both have balls. Typically, you give it to an inside player to go and take that risk and mitigate it, but you always want two balls. You want to let your corners do their jobs of being those protectors of the team. You don't necessarily have to see them throw a lot. Some teams do have them. Those guys' job are to be the guardians of that team, keep them safe. Yeah, and you can see number six from Hong Kong, Lewin. You can see him doing exactly that. And there on the counter, they managed to eliminate La Rosa. And uh, Chow there was trying to get aggressive trying to force something at him so his other corner could go up and take a shot as well. And Ooh. Okay. I think he survived that one. I think that one bounced. It was a good curveball, but I believe that bounced before it actually connected with him. And now he's still got a tough job. One on five, missing high. Ooh, oh, that's a catch. catch. By Chris Lung on the back line. That's, that's one of my favorite places to be. If I don't have a ball, being back there, and if they take that counter throw, it's uh, like backing up in baseball in the outfield. Exactly. And he was... He was positioned well for just kind of guessing where that throw was going and being in a good spot to make make a play on it. So uh, that was Lawrence. Oh, no, that was Chris Lung, sorry. Just shadowing his teammates and coming up with the ball. Now, one thing we didn't mention on the rush, you are allowed to cross that center line, and you saw, oh, I think that was, that was off the deflection maybe. One of the players got hit, perhaps not. But you did see there, John Lewin, number 21. He did cross, he slid in order to retrieve the balls <laughs> off the rush. You are allowed to clear the line in that case. How far? I don't know if there's an official limit. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just go to your side of the court? <laughs> I mean, you're, you're still a live target, so. There we saw Duarte getting hit out. And Big pressure coming from the corner and Ooh. stays alive. What balance. He committed hard there, Wee. Yeah, that was close, but <laughs> he lives for now. Ooh, narrowly dodging an attack there, but uh, oh, and then we see <laughs> and we see Hinson taking his moment, hitting a player who wasn't fully set up to dodge it, and now Hong Kong with five players. That was Jeff Floro. He was dropping to his knees trying to get that catch. And big nice catch grab. Ooh, he <laughs> oh, and the chaos. Uh, a lot of catching going on by the Argentinian team. Yeah, they're doing a good job of squaring up to those balls and That's hanging Ruiz, on to them. right? That's like his fourth or fifth catch. There's a big throw attempt missing. Oh. <laughs> Hinson. That's number nine, Rob Hinson. 
running That's up and just saying, nope, you're not getting close. You're not touching my players. La Rosa was sure he hit Hinson, too. You could see him uh, checking with the refs, but doesn't look like he'd connected there unless the referee's conferring, saying one ball needs to go back over to Argentina. Usually they'll do that if the play stops or, or something causes it. Uh, one of the teams throws a ball at a moment where they didn't need to when the refs were starting to talk. The refs will usually rebalance the balls afterward. So just to call out, this is no block time. This half has gone down to, to we've run out of time in the half. So no players allowed to block. Everything's got to be dodging or catching. Uh, but we go until everyone's off the court. It's not first hit or anything like that. It's not like a sudden death. Just no blocking. Yeah. And I should have I should have realized that because that's the real reason the refs rebalance the ball. So when sudden death starts, both teams get three balls regardless of the situation. Uh, before that, and both teams start from the back wall, or the back wall, the back line. There are no walls here. <laughs> now Argentina, all three players ooh, looking to block. Oh, and he got hit, and then a back and forth. I think we're just down to one on one now. We have Lawrence Wong against Ruiz, who's been very accurate. Wong. Attacks, Ooh. misses, Ruiz, hits! Big hit! Argentina takes their first point! Yeah, getting themselves on the board at the end of the first half. Yeah, good on them. That was Ruiz, who I have to say, overall, he's found his accuracy. His throws have been on point. Yeah. So. I'm going to chop it up to, uh, you know, getting started with that ball for the day. And yep. I know I've thrown these things right into the gutter and... You know, it takes a little bit to, like, realize, especially if you play multiple ball types. Yeah. And especially while the balls are, if they're brand new, and I think most of these balls that are being used have been new as of uh, the beginning of the day, at least, they take a little while to break in properly. A few throws, a few, like, uh, times gripping them before they really feel comfortable. What a match. Argentina takes that point. That's a big win for them going into the second half. I think they're going to find some confidence in that. Yeah, a little bit of momentum, a little bit of confidence. Right, every, every game they've been chipping away, uh, you know, back in, it started off, you know, pretty dominant for Hong Kong, but they started getting those player counts, usually like a one-on-one -on -one in a lot of those games toward the end. Yeah, we saw quite a few that, again, just maybe if, if uh, Ruiz or Duarte, when they were the last players left, if they've been able to get through the blocks, of Hong Kong, or maybe get a lucky bounce, then the score could be a lot closer. I think that last point got marked up for Hong Kong, but that should actually say six to one for Argentina. Yes, that last game went to Argentina. So it should be six one Argentina. We'll see what happens. I think it's uh, the scoreboard's also messed up, but we'll see. Okay, so if anyone has questions, um, please ask them in the chat. Uh, we're looking at the uh, YouTube chat to be clear. So there's 557 of you out there. You know, add some uh, questions. I know there's got to be a couple. I will gladly answer them while we're in this half. Yeah, we'll do what we can. Uh, we have access to a lot of information. Uh, one of the questions, are the women playing simultaneously? Uh, yes, the Schedule has, on court four right now, Mexico versus Malaysia is a women's match that's happening. We've also got, uh, for the other men's games happening, Australia versus Canada on court two, and USA versus Italy on court three. And once we find out when the streams for those are working, we will let you know. Uh, score for Canada, Australia, I, I couldn't tell you, but I know that... Uh, I think Australia just had a really big win. I saw a lot of excitement coming from that court earlier. It looks like we're getting back into the game now of Hong Kong versus Argentina. Yeah, so we'll see if Argentina can build on their momentum from the end. Ooh, that looked like a good and desperate block off the rush. And that was Ezekiel Tomasi surviving. This Argentinian team, Ooh. they are just throwing constantly and that's got to be difficult for like Hong Kong to deal with. I'm I know I wouldn't be used to it. There's there's risk involved though obviously. If you connect, it's a great play. If you miss, the other team has that many extra balls. Uh, so it's a big risk versus reward style. Ooh. Okay, he dodged out of the way there. <laughs> See, he wanted to get that ball before it got over to the Hong Kong side, but 
They were not willing to give it up so easily. Uh, I believe the scores, by the way, are on the WDBF uh, website, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if they're uh, updated uh, live, but I do believe they are updated after each match, for those asking in the chat. Sorry about that. Um, okay, Argentina pushing up. Yeah, we see then the trailing throw, not connecting. Ooh. Getting and out of the way there, number 44. Duarte. And meanwhile, Tomasi, he tried to go low, but it was read well by, uh, I believe that was Clarence Hui on the connection. Ooh, good. <laughs> it was a good throw from Lawrence Wong outside his body, going to the opposite corner. Ooh. Duarte trying to find number 24, Clarence Hui again, but, oh, and there's another throw. That was there, at, there was the aggression that you were talking about out of Argentina. Yeah. The second they, they're looking away, they're, they're willing to throw. See some back and forth, but nothing doing yet in terms of outs. Hong Kong looks like they got a lot out of their huddle because they're coming back with a new ammo. <laughs> Taking a play out of Argentina's book there. Just kind of throwing as they're backpedaling. Yep. Hints in there, hit out in the feet by a, a good long range shot. We see Duarte. Number 24 for Hong Kong, putting a lot of pressure there. Yeah, Duarte hit out there. And now it's just Roberto Tavella missing and still alive, going under a couple of balls there. Was he in the last match or did he sub in this one? Uh, I don't think he was in the last point at least. Oh. Okay. Then he does finally get hit. He did get one before getting knocked out, but the odds are obviously against you when you're one on five. So. Okay, Hong Kong takes that point. It's now 8-1 Hong Kong. And you're right, they came out of the half, halfway huddle with purpose and a plan. And definitely executed on it well there. For those asking me in the chat, I'm not uh, certain if the other cameras will be up today for sure. Um, I do know we will have court one throughout the day. Um, if I hear anything, I will let the stream know. Getting into game 10 here. Big foot shot, number 15, Wong. Yeah, he hit out Tomasi, where Tomasi was not going to block it. So, great shot from him. Just wide there, the throw from number nine, Hinson. Argentina's pushing up. Yeah, we see a throw connecting onto Hinson. He could not catch that, so Duarte knocking him out. Now Hong Kong, three I balls strong. I gotta give it up to this Argentinian team. Uh, I think the fact that none of them have to be told to throw means that like, they don't need a huddle. They just kind of go up and they're just taking their shots when they see them. It's a lot more uh, you know, a comfortable position. Like if I have that shot, I'm, I get to take it. Yeah, I'm curious, I'm curious if they have uh, like a system for like, who gets to throw and under what circumstances or if they're more comfortable just kind of dealing with it based on the situation. Saw some good athletic dodging there from Clarence Wee. Now Hong Kong, five balls to the line. They don't actually knock anyone out with them. Yeah, staying safe now. Argentina still has, what is it, four or five players with four on the court. Yeah. Now each of them up with a ball. Those miss, Two. another Go. missing. <laughs> oh, the cross court. Missing again, but we see Duarte getting knocked out in the far corner. And now Hong Kong with more balls means they got a throw. Okay, Hong Kong willing to take that trade there. Yeah, Floro knocked out, and I believe Ruiz should be out as well. Refs conferring again. Hong Kong using this time to to call a play. Smart move. Yeah, might as well. All right, let's see if I can call this right. I think this one is going to be Kong throwing. If I can read their huddle correctly. Yeah, we'll put your, put your fortune telling to the test. <laughs> Aha. Well, <laughs> he might have been Ooh. one of several. You see some frustration with uh, one of the calls, I guess, but. Yeah, 
Yeah, the referees. I think that's 9-1 Hong Kong now, right? That is correct. And the referee is doing a good job of keeping this game moving well. 15 minutes left in this half. This is the second half, to be clear. Um, two halves, 20 minutes each. Team with the most points takes the match. That's the point you want. Well, Hong Kong, formidable lead at this point. Now off the rush. We see there's a hit. And another hit. Ooh! What a... That was a hell of a throw, and it got him. And another throw from the back line. Oh, I thought it was a foot shot, but it must have hit ground before it got him. I think so. Tomasi, again with that aggressive throw from near the back, but... And another one. He's got a nice little dive on his throw. Now Hong Kong just regrouping again and coming up. And they go for middle. Once again, seeing those corners hold that ball, keep the pressure further up on the court. So if someone tries to take a, a throw, there's a lot of pressure. And we see a couple throws from Argentina missing. And we can also see Ezekiel Tomasi faking as he backs up, trying to make sure that the pressure is minimal against his team. And I think that was a hit onto that both. Was both there. Yeah, both of the Tomasis knocked out. So. Are there two Tomasis? I didn't even realize that. Yeah. Unclear if they're related. Ooh. Big out. Who is left in here? Uh, that is Nicolas La Rosa. He's showing catch in case they want to take the shot. Oh. And now two balls in hand. He comes up to try and do some damage. Missing outside and high. That one's blocked by Matthew Kong. Matthew Kong putting that pressure back too. Seeing if he can force a mistake by uh, La Rosa. Oh. And that was, was that a hit on Clarence Wee? 14 minutes left in this half. Looks like it's 10 Wong Hong Kong. So I'm pretty sure La Rosa's still safe. The question is whether uh, we got hit or whether he blocked it cleanly, so. I think that's what they're talking about anyway. Okay, ref's explaining to the captain, right? No, that's La Rosa. I guess it was the player impacted on the play. Yeah. Typically, it's only the captains that get to talk to the refs, correct? That is right. They want to make sure that not every player is uh, talking to the refs. There's one point of contact for the team, usually. And, but that was a point for Hong Kong in the end, so I think that was uh, either a trade or maybe just La Rosa was hit. But and Now off the opening rush, both teams quick to the ball. Ooh, Good block as he fell. Big block there. Falling backwards, kept his eyes open and tracked that ball and made sure to get a piece of it deflecting away from himself. Pressure coming from number 13. Jeremy Yam taking that corner position. And we see Hong Kong now. Four balls strong and missing. Oh, oh big <laughs> shot by Ruiz, a 50 foot shot. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think, I'm not sure who that was, but he was not ready for that ball. That back. was uh, John Liu, and he he walked off the court toward us, and I just saw his face. He was laughing about that one. That's uh, that's a 50-foot shot. Tavella hit out, and now nice dodge in there. That's Tomasi. Yeah. To be specific, uh, Leonardo Tomasi. Yep. Because there are two. Hey, did a good job getting low under the ball, and there we see him throwing, missing. Ooh, a lot of pressure by that corner. Gets low, gets out of the way. Yeah, Jeremy in. Throwing high and then going low. And now Hong Kong with only one ball. Argentina hits Yam there. And this is a good position for the Argentinian side. You know what, even if they don't take this one, they're gonna learn a lot from this match, right? Going forward, you want that momentum, you want that confidence. Uh, one of the biggest drains is just not having that confidence going into the next match. So getting some big wins at the tail of this as a first-time team, I think is going to really put some wind in their sails. Yeah, I think they've had ooh, some back and forth there, missing from everybody. La Rosa took a shot, missed, and then 
Chris Lung decided to try and take the counter. Also missed. See, it's, it is hard to connect with these balls under pressure and in the moment sometimes, but. Okay, five players left for Argentina, four for Hong Kong. That stagnated double team, they don't want two people right in front of each other to, to take that shot because that opens up a lot of pressure on that side, leaving Argentina, uh, large, uh, leaving Argentina the ability to just charge forward and try to take someone out. Yeah, if you keep your players crunched up together, it's like the other team gets to target two or more players with one ball. That's not a good situation to be in. Yeah, so. especially with these balls that whip and curve a lot. They get a lot of movement and they, they come off of you pretty fast as well. Yeah, you may see, we may see some double hits, even they're, they're rare, but you could see a triple. If players are too bunched up or if the bounces go that way. Oh, I think Ruiz with the catch as he was backing up. Yeah, Argentina now with the player advantage. Oh, that was a close one. Number 43, uh, Tavella uh, took a shot, but just got blocked. That was a beautiful shot, though. That would have taken the ankle if he wasn't paying attention. I got to give it up to this Argentina team. I'm really enjoying watching them. They're super aggressive. They're taking the shots when they see them. Oh, there I think they, so I believe there that was the 10 second count ran out and Argentina didn't take a throw, which means all of the balls go to the other team. So now Hong Kong with a big advantage, but you got to actually connect on those throws. <laughs> okay, let's see what Hong Kong can do here. I believe it's three on three or three on four. Still nothing connecting. So now we see the three Argentinian players looking for a blood, but ooh, there's a ball hopped over by Otto. And we're looking at two on three, Hong Kong missing high. Still three balls on the side of uh, Hong Kong, four now. You can see Leonardo Tomazzi doing a good job of staying low. Oh, and there's a counter just missing from Tavella, and he survives the counter counter. You'll notice once both teams typically have a, a ball for each player on the court, uh, the game starts to slow down. Everyone's got a blocker. It's harder to get everyone out. So that opening uh, couple throws is very important to dictate who you're trying to get out, who's the big threat. Um, so right now with Hong Kong having two balls each on each of their players, uh, they get to be very defensive and choose their battles. Oh, but there's a counter. Oh, the back and forth. Going Hong Kong's way as Ezekiel Tomasi is knocked out. And now it's just Norberto Tavelli. Tavella, sorry. Let's see what he can do. There's aggression. That oh. ball. Oh. I think if he'd been able to find it out on the pop up. It looked like both might have hit him, which is That's why possible, he, he yeah. turned around and looked at it. Okay, Argentina taking a huddle while everything's getting set up. So they did lose the point, but as we were saying before, they've had quite a few close uh, points. So I think they, once they find a bit more ability to close those out, I mean, if they can get themselves in those positions where they, they're they even on numbers as the player counts diminish from both sides, then they'll, they'll be able to actually get a few more points on the board for themselves. I think another big point is this is day one of a, of a four-day event. And so, yeah. unlike last year, where not everyone made it to the bracket, everyone makes it to the bracket this year. So teams get to experiment more in the round robin. Um, they're going to find out what's working, what's not working, and look for them to refine that game day after day, even match between match. Yep. So look for them to refine it and see what's working, what's not. Maybe Argentina comes back less aggressive tomorrow, but maybe they find that's what works, and they go even more aggressive and say, we don't want any balls. We're just going to throw them the second we get them. So look to see this game evolve day after day after day. I look forward to seeing how the tactics change. We've seen sometimes players who are used to one position switching to another. Oof. We see Duarte hit out off a uh, delayed play on the rush. We're seeing it a lot, actually, with Hong Kong. This right corner for them has been changing a lot. Yeah. I think at this level, uh, everybody is versatile enough that they can play anywhere, but you still tend to have people who are very strong in the wing or very strong as middles. Um, you may flex depending on circumstances. Ooh, that's a big shot on Ezekiel Tomasi to knock him out. 
That was Chow, I believe, letting go with a good hard one right to the chest. We've got these soundproof headshots, uh, headsets on, and uh, that shot still was like pretty, like a yeah. clear <laughs> boom in my headset. Okay, Hong Kong training a lot. We're down to the last two players. I think on uh, two players for Argentina and three for Hong Kong. Just over three minutes remaining in the second half. So Ruiz there was looking for another throw. I saw his arm go back, but he didn't take it. Stopped himself there. And you could see number 18 for Hong Kong there, Chris Lung. You could see he disguised where he was throwing pretty well. He was looking at number eight, La Rosa, but ended up throwing across his body at Ruiz instead. Difficult to do well, but. Big counter by number 18. And La Rosa gets Kong hit gets out. Chris Lung yeah. defending his corner there. Had to play uh, like the secondary corner position. Yep. Corner on corners fight. I'm going to make sure that corner goes. Yeah, sometimes that's the fluidity. If if your if your team's starting corner player runs up or runs to the middle because of just where the play goes, somebody might need to cover that position because you don't really want to leave it open for too long. Maybe you cover it temporarily until you know if Ruiz is in the corner and he runs out of it. Maybe someone else has to cover it until he gets back, but. Good awareness there from Hong Kong, I think, shifting around as the situation dictates. Yeah, we, we were talking earlier about how the corners are uh, the key protectors of the team, but it's everyone's job to keep each other safe and keep yep. that pressure on. For nice. those just joining us again, by the way, welcome to the World Dodgeball Championships Day 1 Round Robin. Yeah, I'm, I'm just happy to see this again. I love high-level dodgeball. There's, there's nothing better than it. I mean, imagine baseball with six balls. How weird that would be. Doesn't How much it would work. hurt. Only dodgeball can pull that off. <laughs> oh, we see a good shot onto Jeremy Yam's ankle. Uh, from the chat, Mr. Snapback, yes, this is the first match of the day, Hong Kong versus Argentina. You see a delayed throw there from Lawrence Wong following his teammates after the initial volley. And now Argentina comes back up. Not sure what shot from Tomasi is missing. Big block. Ruiz taking that shot. Hong Kong coming forward. <laughs> Blocked dismissively, I would say, by Otto. But <laughs> Ooh, then he gets and hit. and a big counter right on the go. Yeah, and we also see Chris Lung knocked out. So some of, some of those Argentinian shots are connecting now. Once again, they'd found the rhythm in the second half of the first half. Maybe lost it a bit here in the second half. They're I wouldn't even say they lost the rhythm. I'd say Hong Kong kind of pulled together during that uh, during that halftime and was like, they're playing different. We have to adjust. Yeah. So Hong Kong being that veteran team, uh, looks like they're playing a little bit more aggressive, keeping them back, putting a lot more pressure this time. Yeah, they have executed their strategy well. And now we see... Shots at the opposite players from Argentina. But we see both Hong Kong players doing well to make themselves small targets and hide behind the balls, protecting themselves well. Ooh, we see a good block from Siufi. Once again, these Argentina players are not afraid to throw. They're just not afraid of the court. They're putting a lot of pressure. They're moving up. And they get down Big to one. Big catch. Yep. That was Min Yu Chow. Number five for Hong Kong, making that big catch. But unfortunately, his teammate on the other side was out, so could be worse. Oh, nice block as well. You know, in this situation, when they were down four players to two, that, that kind of evens it up a bit. I'd say so. Gave themselves a much better chance. And that throw missing high. Oh, another, another catch. Min Yu Chao coming up big with these catches. And now three on one, Tavella missing, another miss. He makes his own catch. Tavella brings in some help and we're back to two on two. Okay. Min Yu Chao brings Go Ado in. Go Ado says, let's even up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, four balls for Hong Kong. Little conversation. You'll notice just how fast these teams are making plays and, and talking to each other and knowing exactly uh, what to do. These guys have played a ton together. Uh, Tavella did miss. And 
Now La Rosa, the only player remaining against two from Hong Kong. Missing low, very aggressive, and stuck at the line. <laughs> oh, okay. That was, that was interesting. Uh, once a ball hits you and goes in the air, you're not dead until that ball hits the ground. So he ran over to get that ball and take the other person out. Yeah. Uh, that it was just right in front of him. Yeah, he if he'd been out. if he'd been quick enough, it is possible that if the ball that had hit uh, La Rosa was live and in the air, and he picked up another ball, hit his opponent, and that that uh, second ball dropped to the ground before the first ball dropped to the ground. <laughs> you know, it's complicated. And as a ref, I hate watching for those kinds of things. But <laughs> those are always the most stressful calls when you're looking somewhere else and. <laughs> yeah, trying to follow the timing of multiple things at once is difficult. So the score now is 12-1. Four minutes left in this second half. Tavella hit out. So fun fact about this Hong Kong team is that the way they select their teams is they have a bunch of divisions. And uh, these are the best of the all-star team for their Division I Hong Kong team. So you got to get your team all the way to Division One, then you got to make the All-Star team, and then you got to be the best of the All-Star team to make that squad. Interesting. And then I suppose they've got uh, several months to practice as the national team, try to build chemistry and strategy. And every team's going to play a little different. Like Argentina right now, playing very aggressive, not being afraid to take those shots. You know, it, it kind of puts, you know, when the other team is going to throw with those counters, like, into their own, uh, you know, into their own hands. They say, no, you're going to try to counter me now. They're doing very good at dodging those counter throws. So I yeah. got to give it to them. They're being aggressive, but their their risk management is is high. Yeah, it's it very much it tests your reflexes, your athleticism. Oh, and then we see the rush counters from Hong Kong. Oh, there's a catch <laughs> as he's back one. And another! We see two catches from the Argentinians. No fear. Ruiz big catches. Yep. Starting off with that big catch. Once again, that's what we were just saying. He threw and caught the counter. Everything is on their terms. They're setting the terms. And if they can make it click and, and find what they're missing, uh, look, look to see Argentina make a splash this, this tournament. Exactly. I feel like they've just steadily improved just in this match. And it's kind of a shame they only have one point so far, but they have a player advantage now to try and find themselves a second point. This score does not reflect how well Argentina's done. With, with the style they have, uh, you know, I wouldn't normally, you know, be like, hey, let's try that. But they're bringing these games real close. There's been a lot of, like, one-on-ones left. It just hasn't gone the way of Argentina. Yeah. yeah, we've seen Hong Kong be very collected and calculated. Oh, there we saw... Chris Lung dropping his ball and looking for the catch and not coming down with it. So that That's leaves a little disappointing. In that. Yeah. Uh, just Matthew Kong and the charge counter misses from Ruiz. Kong blocking. Sh shot into the middle, also missing onto Leonardo Tomasi. And Shagger following Matthew Kong. Big ankle shot. What a whip. Good throw. Looks so casual doing it, too. You can tell that he's practiced a ton. That's. I don't know how easy it is to see at home, but that curve is wicked. That's got to be like a six-foot curve. And blocking well. He's holding two balls and blocking. Missing. He goes across his body really well to go across the court. He's doing a lot of no looks, too. He's not looking at who he's throwing at. Except there. Yeah. That time he had to call me out on. Yeah, but there hopefully you can see from the angle that that... Uh, that release he uses, snapping his wrist forward, just pulls the ball down. Almost gets that ankle shot. Yeah, but he's blocking. He's looking aggressive. He misses. La Rosa getting out of the way with a nice little sidestep. La Rosa and Ruiz, last two left on the court. And there's 20, about 20 seconds left in this half. Oh, they miss low. There's a great a hit. Shot. The La Rosa. Ten seconds left. We'll see if this point finishes. I think he tried the old. Uh, I think he tried the old uh, lob one in and follow with a second ball, but I'm not sure. Did La Rosa might have. So I think La Rosa caught that. If he did, then that is obviously a point for Argentina. 
if Hong Kong has that go uh, against them in a tiebreaker, he'll be thinking back to that moment. <laughs> oh, the ref's talking about what happens next. So if the point finishes with any time at all on the clock, you do still start another point and go to sudden death after that. Conversation still going on. And obviously we don't know what they're talking about for sure, but I think they're just setting up for another point. So we have only six seconds remaining on the clock here, and it's Oh, just, just to start a new match, huh? Yep. Oh, and I think that was a false start. Uh, so if one player does take off before the refs are actually ready to start the play, they will get a warning. If there are subsequent false starts on your team, you just start down a player. So you do not want to get that second false start. Oh, is that the penalty? Yep. Okay. And Time for no block. Yeah, so now the balls will be split up. Three per team, no blocking allowed. The ball is a live part of your body. And let's see how it finishes. Argentina took the last sudden death at the end of the first half. <laughs> Getting him to, to walk the tightrope there. Yeah. Finds his balance. I feel like the no blocking <laughs> suits Argentina's style well. Hong Kong, a very good blocking team. That's a really good point. This is, this is when Argentina wants the match to go in their favor. Yeah. <laughs> Hong Kong taking a page out of Argentina's book and throwing from behind that, that line. But I guess Argentina's kind of put them on that back foot with how aggressive they are on throwing. Yeah. Counter. Oh. Tavella surviving. A couple of balls going his way. There's a miss. Ooh, Ooh big dodge. That good athletic low dodge there. You got to learn that dodge. Yeah. <laughs> I do not go flat out enough. The problem is I don't pop up very quickly, so. <laughs> we see that curve again this time. Matthew Kong. I think those balls Ooh. collided in air. I think so. I think Duart should still be fine. And now, again, Ruiz surviving. Ooh. They really want Ruiz out. I mean, he's been playing the style that probably threatens the most right now. Yeah, and they're gunning for him, but so far, no luck. Long throw from Duarte. Big throw. And this is what we're talking about. Argentina has no problem throwing from that back line. Sometimes they connect. And well, it looks like Duarte is safe there. But then he spikes that one into the ground. Ooh. <laughs> then we see some more back and forth. And Otto will go off the course. Course. Court. And we are looking at three from Hong Kong against two from Argentina. That one going a little wild. For those asking in the chat, the score should be posted on the WDBF website, but I will confirm that. And we just saw Duarte bringing it to a two on two. Missing, that one bounces. That one's shot high by La Rosa. Now Hong Kong on the offensive, missing. That was Chris Long looking and getting under the counter throw. Two players left. Once again, this is the no block overtime for this match. Argentina's looking to get that second point. Yeah, La Rosa, that I think, connects. just got grazed. Yep. And there's a that solid shot onto Duarte. Hong Kong taking the sudden death point. So that, I suppose, will be a 13 to 1 finish for the Hong Kong side. Argentina showing a lot of heart and some good throws. And some really close points that just didn't quite go their way. But there's a lot to build on for them going forward. Yeah, a lot to build on. It's super interesting style. I think it's going to catch a lot of teams off guard. And I think we're going to you know, look to see them do well in this tournament. Um, you know, Hong Kong's a veteran team. And I think they, they increased that gap going to that second half when they came together and adjusted to it. Yeah, you could see that their adjustments really worked well for them. So I think that's part, perhaps, of just playing together for a long time, understanding the game really well. I think they adjusted really solidly to what Argentina was throwing at them. So 
<laughs> literally what Argentina was throwing at them. Oh. Once again, Argentina throwing like full court shots on them. Yeah, that they really impressive. They were that is a degree of confidence that I can say I don't necessarily have. Yeah. Um, so hopefully Argentina can channel that and build on it. I'm not sure who they play next, but we'll let you know. We'll see how that goes as they get onto the tournament. I know that's one of those shots that if you know someone's going to take that shot when you're not looking, you might want to bait it out. You might want to pretend like you're not looking, keep your eye up a little bit, and drop and take that catch. It's possible, yeah. You can try to bait those in. But the other thing that's strong about what the Argentinian team is doing is if a team, if the team that they're against huddles up too much in order to decide what they're doing next and Argentina sees a, a shot at a crowd of people, I feel like they will not be shy about taking those throws. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, and I think it, it helped the fact that uh, Hong Kong really didn't huddle. Yeah, right? A lot of their calls are very quick. Uh, they know each other very well, so they got to say, you're doing this, and they, they broke out and they knew, and they trusted each other and got out there and just did what they had to do. Yeah, you could, and may, who knows, maybe they would have huddled more, but the the pressure from Argentina maybe discouraged that kind of like slower, deliberate play, so. Yeah, it's always one of the scariest moments when you're in that huddle and someone throws, and you know, do you have to go for that catch because otherwise you're screening the guy behind you? Or Especially if, if you don't have a ball and your teammates do, but you're in the huddle with them for, for whatever reason, it can be a little scary if you see maybe Ruiz just lining up to, to take somebody out. So. Five minutes until the next match.